Welcome to Build with me, your host, Simon Atkins. As always, we are live from London with a very, very excited audience today. Now, can I ask, how are you with Creepy Crawlies? Pretty bad. How bad? Like a nine. <laughs> Well, let's hope today's guests haven't brought anybody. If you're looking for a front row seat to thrilling wildlife globally, then you're going to love today's guests. Are we excited? <laughs> Quirky, it's the Irwin's Lands next month on Animal Planet, so please give it up for Terry, Bindi, and Robert Irwin. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. People are so excited to have you guys here. I don't think I've ever had such a loud audience. <laughs> Welcome to London. Welcome oh, to Build. How's your time in London been so far? It's Crikey. Been awesome. It's <laughs> so good. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been, it's been absolutely great. Less crocodiles here, but it's still been a lot of fun. It's been <laughs> Have you been to a zoo yet? In we, we haven't yet, I don't think, but we are excited to go and visit Hyde Park. And we have been to Hyde Park before, and we think it's gorgeous. We love it because in Australia, we don't have squirrels. And so we love covering Robert in nuts and then just having the squirrels <laughs> converge upon him. It's so much fun. We, and the we, birds we and things. We do that everywhere. We do that with seagulls and with, I'm just the, the mountain, lions thing, so. mountain lions. Mountain yeah. lions. Uh, but it's slightly you, more yes. scary than a yes. squirrel. Yes. <laughs> but watching the people in Hyde Park, it's kind of cool. Oh, it yeah, is. It's, it's great really for people watching. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we're going to be talking to you all about your brand new series in just a second. But first, if you guys at home want to get involved and ask the guys a question, you absolutely can. All you need to do is tweet us at Bill Series LDNs, our Twitter handle, or drop a message below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. So guys, Crikey the Irwin's Lands next month on Animal Planet. You must be thrilled that it's coming back. Uh, tell us about the series and what we can expect. We are so excited. This series, crikey, it's us, the Owens. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> and we're back. Khaki is definitely back. And we always say that khaki is not just a color. It's an attitude. Right, so okay. So our hearts will be turning khaki for this new show. But it is amazing. So we'll be taking you on the journey with us. From our amazing work at Australia Zoo, where we have over 1,200 animals, we have our Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital that's rescued and rehabilitated over 78,000 sick, injured, and all orphan animals. We also have our conservation projects globally, helping rhinos and cheetahs in Africa, tigers in Sumatra. It's all happening. And then we'll take you on these extraordinary adventures where we go and catch crocodiles in far north Queensland. How do you fit it all in? That's what I want to know. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, a lot of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, listen, why don't we have a quick look at you guys in action and then we can talk more about the series. Steve and I often talked about our big dream for Australia Zoo, to make it the best zoological facility on planet Earth. It's really more of a resort for wildlife. You're able to experience them hands-on. You see them, you feel them. You discover a koala smells like eucalyptus, that a bincharong smells like popcorn. It's amazing. We want to make sure that there's an abundance of wildlife and a beautiful world for the generations to come. It's all about encouraging people to fall in love with wildlife and make a difference on the planet. With everything that we do, we're ultimately trying to continue Dad's legacy. We really are kicking the goals that he originally set. We went from a few animals to 1,200 animals. We've expanded our conservation properties. We've got a wildlife hospital now that's treated over 76,000 animals. I'm very proud of being part of something that is now even bigger than when Steve was here. The future is looking so beautiful. We have so much on the horizon. Crikey! It's the Irwins. What an amazing series. And it's so beautifully shot as well. It's just, it, looks, it looks amazing. I can't wait to watch it. Um, you guys run Australia's largest family-owned zoo. So what is it like shooting this series on top of doing everything else that you do? Oh, it's a stack of fun. So first of all, every day is different. All the wildlife is different. 
Robert gets out of school, so he's loving yes. it. Awesome. And, <laughs> and you just never know what's going to happen during the day. So you might just be running around, then all of a sudden a giraffe's giving birth, so off you go. We've got a rescue unit that gets about 50 calls a day. So wow. you might be in the ocean saving a turtle, the top of a tree saving a bird. And that's kind of the spice of life and what wildlife is all about, is getting out there, making a difference, and seeing what's going on. But the behind the scenes of Australia Zoo is so different than just coming in and enjoying the wildlife, because you can't really see what's going on with all of the work with Sumatran tigers and the work with black rhinos and the things going on beyond, behind the scenes. So we'll take you everywhere. I mean, the, your work is absolutely incredible, and we'll talk about your dad in a second. Um, and your late husband. But um, what I want to talk about first is, um, you know, what, how do you help people like me and probably like a lot of people in the audience here who are scared and petrified of kind of these exotic animals? Yeah, yeah, well, that's... It's I'm so, I mean, I don't know, I'd be so scared to be near a snake or a tiger or anything like that. Yeah. But well, you guys it, are just it so... Makes, it, makes, it makes sense. I mean, you, that, you, that you wouldn't want to be cuddling a, a crocodile or doing anything like that. <laughs> that. That makes sense. But for us, I think... The more you understand these animals, the more you're around them, you just feel more comfortable with them. So for Bindi and I, we've, I mean, literally our, our entire lives, we've been living in Australia Zoo. So, you know, we, we really get to experience these animals hands on. And that's actually what the show is all about. It's not, it's very different to most wildlife documentaries because it's, you're not really looking at animals far afield. It's this one-on-one -on -one connection that we have. Mm. So we're really bringing these animals into your living room. So, like, that, that's Jenny the snake. Wow. And you'll be able to see... Jenny the snake these, is huge. Yeah, these kind of personalities that each animal has. And hopefully along the way it'll, it'll help you overcome your fears. What is the <laughs> hardest thing um, about having to look after these animals on a daily basis? Is it getting up really early in the morning to feed them? <laughs> That's a good question. Because that would kill me. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess there really isn't a sleep-in day because even on Sundays, the lemurs are up as soon as the sun rises and they start calling and yelling. But what's wonderful is our alarm clock are the tigers roaring and the crocodiles grumbling, and it is so special. But I do think, you know, on Sundays, they're, they're still <laughs> up early. You're out feeding them. But how cool. I mean, how cool to start your everyday like this. Amazing. With a tiger, going on walks with all of our animals. And it is so much fun. I think that for us, we want to make sure that our animals are always having the best day possible. So we're constantly coming up with new and fun and exciting ways to help them have a great day. So we do take our tigers on huge long walks. Our wombats get to walk a wherever Sunday they want. A Sunday morning walk with the tigers. Totally. I mean, that's, that's it's quite awesome. Funny. It's and so you, know, you know what was funny is when Bindi was little, she had a pony. Yeah. And I'd say to her, take the radio with you so you can walkie-talkie the tigers and make sure they're not out <laughs> on a walk when you're with the pony. Yeah. The well, tigers would have, would have been like, oh, yeah. Yeah, this looks <laughs> great. Well, listen, no surprise that social media is going crazy for you guys. And we've had a question Thank from Kreshel Brown on our build website. What's the best part of living in a zoo? And do you interact with the animals when the zoo is closed to the public? Well, you've kind of yeah. answered that one already. Yes, definitely. What's the best part about living in a zoo? Oh, I think for me, there's, there's so much that's so exciting about living in a zoo. But I think the really the most special thing is when guests come into Australia Zoo and often it's people that really don't have a lot to do with wildlife and we're able to give them this kind of connection with mm. with the natural world. So people that don't, you know, on a daily basis get to do what we do and cuddle koalas and do all of this amazing stuff, to give them that opportunity is just wonderful. Especially, I mean, we see a lot of young people that come into the zoo that get to really feel these animals. They get to, to pat them and feed them and experience them. And if you can get animals into your heart like that, that's how you're really going to want to save them in the wild. Does it ever get tiring or do you guys have this endless love? I mean, you clearly do have this endless love for kind of, you know, wildlife and animals. Yeah, and it's, kind of, it's yeah. like anything you're passionate about. It's like saying, mm, I love surfing in Fiji, but I'll wake up one morning and go, yeah, I think we can give <laughs> surfing away. Yeah, I want a holiday. Yeah. So it's whatever you're passionate about is something that's just kind of within your soul. So if, if, 
you can find out why you're here, what your purpose is, and then you get to wield that in your life, then you're really lucky. So many of us, when we're five years old, we go, here's what I want to be when I grow up. And then you realize you have to do something else to pay the bills. But look at you, Simon. You're living the dream. <laughs> you know? Here you are doing... Speaking to you, lovely sharing, people. You know what? But sharing stories. You're amazing. And the animals, I'm sure, are feel, feel... I hope they feel very privileged to have you. They should feel very privileged. <laughs> because you, you guys do incredibly amazing work. Now, I want to talk about the on-site um, care centre at the hospital because you guys perform a lot of procedures there and you spend a lot of time there, Bindi, don't you? I, I do. What kind of procedures do, do you perform there and how heartbreaking is it when you see animals being poorly? Yeah, it is. It is For me, it's such a blessing to be at the Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital because it has a huge history behind it. So let me take you back for one minute Let's do it. just to explain why we have the wildlife hospital. So dad's mum, so our grandmother, Lynn Irwin, she was an extraordinary wildlife carer and she took care of sick, injured and orphaned animals around the local area and she wanted to rehabilitate them to release them back out into the wild. And she actually passed away just before I turned two. And when she died, mum and dad wanted to create something so that her legacy could live on. So that's why we built the Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital. And today, after having 78,000 animals come through our doors, it's, it's mind boggling to us that, you know, we're saving individual animals, but also protecting entire species. Mm. So I'm there nearly every day yeah, <laughs> because I, I love helping out. And whether it's checking up on our koalas, just the other day I was helping out with the sea turtle surgery. The sea turtle had swallowed fish hooks and it was really terrifying oh. because one of the fish hooks was sitting like right over the sea turtle's heart. It was terrifying. Oh my God. So it was, it was really scary. And so we were working working to the best of our ability to try and save its life. And, you know, for us, we get so many individual animals in that just need our love and care. And then we get to release them back out into the wild healthy. And what a special experience for us. This is what we love. This is what we mm. do. It's who we are. And to be able to save these lives, oh, it means the world to me. It is bittersweet at times. And in the show with Crikey, it's the Owens, you'll get to see those wonderful challenges. There's heartbreak but there's also beautiful, inspiring moments where we have those big wins for wildlife. And you're so, you're all so passionate about it. And I think, you know, it's absolutely, isn't it amazing how passionate they are? <laughs> you spend a lot of time hanging out with crocodiles. Yes. yes and in yes. episode one, we see you feeding Greg. And I think, <laughs> is there like a whole, was there a whole long process to actually being able to do this? Just tell, yeah. tell us about that. Yeah, so Graham the crocodile is my favorite croc. So I called him Greg. His name is Greg. Uh, okay. <laughs> We, Greg works Greg, too. Greg it's is his Greg, nickname. Greg, Greg. That's all good. Greg, Graham, yeah. So this is that. That's Graham, and Graham is he hilarious won't mind. because no, you, you can call him Greg. It's fine. Greg for short. Oh, and he's he's the only crocodile at Australia Zoo that's actually um, bitten a, a few people. So he he bit Dad, and and the director of Australia Zoo Wes, he he got him on the bum. So he's a very <laughs> he's he's a very grumpy little crocodile, Graham. And little. so there's nothing little about him. Let me tell you. <laughs> so part of what I'm doing at Australia Zoo is, is learning how to, to feed all the animals, how to work with every single creature. And it's, it's great. I absolutely love it. But the crocodiles are really the most... You have to be the most safe and calculating mm. and careful with them because if you mess up, it can be very bad. So you, you want the best health and well-being for the croc and yourself. So... Uh, it, you kind of you, you learn on the smaller crocodilians like the alligators and freshwater crocodiles, and then for me, since uh, since I was about ten years old, I've been feeding the big saltwater crocodiles, and um, that was my tenth birthday present from from mum was was getting to feed Does the crocs. Does that not terrify you, mum? <laughs> well, that's that good parenting, really. You wait <laughs> wait until they're mature enough to handle it. He asked me every day since he was two, so it was yep. a long eight years before but he turned ten. It's awesome feeding the crocs in the crocosseum is great. We we have this 5,000 seat auditorium and we can showcase crocs exactly how they, how they behave in the wild and really show how beautiful they are. Like they're, they're not just these mindless killing machines. Mm. They're actually very intelligent. They're very caring, really interesting animals. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they do look really scary, but like 
But um, they're, they're like dinosaurs. It's yeah. so cool. But you know, fair, fair play. Rather you than me. <laughs> Let's put it like that. <laughs> so, what's the coolest species of animals that you have? Or do you have a favourite? Or do you kind of love them all individually? It's really hard. I mean, tough one. Mm, mm, I will tell you that there's. I love our white rhinoceros because we have a big male named DJ, and he's got a few females and a few babies, and it's very special. But people get to meet DJ, and when you meet him, you can feed him and feel his lips, and his lips are soft and squishy oh. and special. And then if you scratch him on the side, pretty soon he puts his leg up like a dog, <laughs> and he's hilarious, and he loves mud baths and long walks on the beach. No. <laughs> <laughs> He does love mud baths, and um, and he's very cool. And you know, when people come and meet DJ at the zoo, all that's between you and him is a log, and so it's not like he's you know behind an enclosure, and you can actually experience him. And then those funds go back to protecting black rhinos in Kenya. So it's a great program. And so there's only a log between you and him, so they don't like they can't come at you. Well, he has. He has. Oh, he's right. gotten oh. over the log, actually, but not just, just recently. Content. Just yeah. recently, for the first time, actually, he just he went. Wait, I can step over this log and decided to, to come over. But it but wasn't not, like coming at us. He was he, he honestly charging, the hay so. was behind the log, so his big feeding platform was kind of behind the log. And so we would break off pieces to give to him and he went, Hold on a second, if I just step over the log, I can eat that. Oh. <laughs> so he stepped over and then went, Now I can't get back. <laughs> so we had to like <laughs> help him get over the log. He's so funny. He's like a big puppy dog. But oh, we love you him. Are. So who's who's this? Who's Those are our beautiful giraffes. That's forest. So, yeah, we have beautiful yeah. forest and little Rosie. But we actually just had a new baby giraffe born at Australia oh. Zoo. And her name is Sophie. And before we came here to lovely London, I was in with Sophie. And, and I was right in with her. So there was nothing between us. And I was, I was talking to her and getting to know her. And she came up to me and she squished her nose onto my face. And they have the squishiest little noses. But she just squished her face on my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I stood there. She's so tall and she's still a baby. When they're born, they're about the size of a doorway. So she leaned down and just put her head on my head and I stood there and went, well, this is nice. And oh, she's just really so sweet. <laughs> but that's the thing about our animals is, is they are so very happy. And dad, dad always said that. He always said our animals come first, then our keepers, and then our visitors. And people always go, why, why are visitors the, the third thing on that list? And we say, no, no, no. It's because when you come to Australia Zoo, you want to see happy animals and happy keepers playing together. And that's what ultimately makes your experience. And so the top of our list is just the, the happiness of our beautiful mm. animals. So whether it's our snakes or echidnas, just like in this photo, they're always so happy. And it's fantastic to get to share our family of animals with everyone who visits. So adorable. Awesome. They are adorable. Um, you obviously are carrying on Steve's legacy. How important is that for you guys? Oh, it's, Who wants to answer? It's, I think it's, it's, I mean, for all of us, it's really, that's our, our biggest goal in, in life. And we've really dedicated our lives to making sure that his, his legacy and his message is remembered because dad really had such an incredible effect and inspired so many millions of people, us included. That's, that's why we're so passionate is because of his enthusiasm and love mm. for wildlife and just his passion for life in general. It was That just, is instilled in each and every one of you. It's yeah. so clear to see that you're, you're, you especially are the spitting image of your dad. <laughs> do people say that to you all the time in every single interview? I bet you yeah. they do. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually really nice though. It's, it's awesome. Awesome. For me, that's the biggest compliment I could I could ever receive, definitely, because I, I, I'm very proud to be to be following in his footsteps, absolutely. Now, he also recently got um, a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which is an incredibly emotional experience, I can imagine, for you guys. Talk us through that and what that experience was like and that, what, and what that would have meant to him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I just, it was amazing. So you have to stop and think, first of all, that this is the first conservationist to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Incredible. So that was huge. That's what Steve would have thought was special because he said, I don't care if anyone ever remembers me, but in the future, I hope they remember my message. Mm. And so when we were there, we were unexpectedly overcome with emotion because you're so celebrating and it's such a happy, wonderful thing. And then you think, oh, but I wish he was here. I know. And so it was, it was like that, but he would have thought it was cool because he's right in front of the Iguana Vintage Clothing Store. <laughs> so 
There's like a giant iguana right above his star. And then um, he's right near Johnny Cash. So he was a big Johnny Cash fan. So that's pretty cool. And um, where did you guys bring this huge snake with you? Or yeah, did they you always did. BYO an anaconda. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta bring one with my you. My anaconda did, apparently. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you. That was really funny. That yeah. was a song reference. Yeah. That was really oh funny, Mom. God. She's Look funny. Anaconda anaconda hip. Don't. What is it? What is song? My anaconda. Rocks, yeah. is this? Yeah. yeah well, don't. 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 Yeah, my don't. Anaconda mine design. did. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Right there. There you go. Look at us, the hip and cool <laughs> Not really. Not really. Not very up with Not pop really culture. Much. Oh. Nope, but, but that is but a beautiful snake. Yeah. It was. It really was. I, I like how she, at one point, she decided that the, the audience looked very interesting, so she just kind of wriggled off and started... Just going down the street, we're, and we had to kind of catch her again. Whoa! I'd say <laughs> the audience. Her. We retrieved her, obviously. Were people yeah. quite scared when they saw that you're whipping out a huge anaconda? Well, you know, they're cool busy. because they grow to be the heaviest snake on the planet. So they get, I kid you not, they'll weigh up to 500 pounds, which is, I don't know what it is in real. What 250, is that? 220? 220, no, 220 kilos. 220 wow. kilos. Okay, sorry, I have to really interpret heavy. American. Anyway, um, <laughs> and and they eat things like caimans and capybaras, which are those big rodent things. And they're um, they're beautiful, amazing snakes with hundreds of teeth, and they're very strong. And it just seemed appropriate to have her there. And highly dangerous. <laughs> well, no. you know, she's when she gets no, a little, she's very, she's she'd, sweet. she'd see you as a food item. She would, but yeah, look, I'm small, still here, but... so we're fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all good, guys. Right, we've That's got some more test. social <laughs> questions coming in. Um, Kylie Brooker says, we can't wait for the new series. What is the most exciting part of Australia Zoo we will get to see? Ooh, Ooh. the most exciting part. That part. is a really good question. Mm. Well, we are going to take you... I think it'd be different for all of us, though, like which, yeah. which is our favourite part. See, my yeah. favourite part of the whole show... Well, is being with my family because I love you guys. Thank you. And I, I also... Quick thinking. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. good. I was going to say the koalas, but, oh. you know, I know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I, I think the most exciting part of the show, truly, is the fact that we have so many flashbacks to Dad. And what's wonderful is throughout everything that we do at Australia Zoo and with Wildlife Warriors, Dad's always with us and a part of everything that we do. And I think that his spirit lives on in our hearts. Absolutely. And so with this brand new show, what's amazing is that you'll be able to see Robert feeding Graham the crocodile and then we'll flash back to Dad feeding Graham. Oh, and how amazing. cool. So some of the footage, we were just watching one of the episodes and some of the footage I hadn't seen before. And I went, oh my goodness, I remember that moment. So I think you'll be able to watch the show and go, wow, I haven't seen this before. And how cool to be able to, you know have those memories with dad and to be able to relive all of these incredible moments that he had with all of our wildlife at Australia Zoo and around the world. So I think that's the best part. And a good question. Very What's the most question. exciting part? And a great answer, I must say. <laughs> now, I think we have an audience question. So Ooh, who would audience. The guys, a question. Yay. We love you guys. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Brittany. Hi. Hi. Um, Good I currently work full time to pay the bills and then every weekend I volunteer at a zoo that is nowhere near our house but that is it's awesome. a really nice place um, what advice would you have for other people like me trying to follow in your footsteps and make a difference to do exactly what you are doing that is fantastic love truly anytime I, I, I talk to anybody who, who asks you know what can I do to make a difference I always say just just stand up for what you believe in and follow your dreams. Volunteer your time because we all have, even if it's difficult, like what you're saying, we all have that little bit of time. And if we really apply ourselves, we can change the world. So first of all, exactly what you're doing is what everyone can do to make a difference because that that is so inspiring. And I think that, you know, it's, it's interesting, when you think about conservation, you don't have to be a full-on conservationist to make a difference. You don't have to be a chef to love fine food. Little steps. Yeah, or an artist to love paintings. You know, you can, you can be involved in conservation work without doing it every single day of the week. So just like what you're doing, I'm so inspired by your story. Thank you, love, and good on you. You're a wildlife warrior <laughs> a already. A round of applause for hey. the lady. That's awesome. 
Um, on the question of conservation, uh, Shannon DeKenzo asks, where have you never visited that you would like to in the name of conservation? Ooh. Oh, there's so okay, many so places this, this on the list. This question goes to Robert, because he has about 427 so things on his list. I places that I would like to go. So many places. Do you have an hour? So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, first of all, okay, I would love... Really, really love to spend more time, I think, in, in Africa. Absolutely love it there. And there's a lot of conservation issues over there. So, you know, with, with poaching, that's really taking a, a huge toll on rhinos especially. We, we do a lot of work with them. So I think that'd be great to spend more time there. Where else do you think? South America? Yeah, no, I no. To go there. Think about Bindi. Oh. You'd like to spend more time with your family. With your yeah. oh, with my family. <laughs> your family. <laughs> Yes, you would. But, yeah, really, and there's there's a you, long list. You would. You, um, oh, Komodo Island to okay, see the Komodo dragons. <laughs> Indonesia. That would be all, with, with, with my family. Now. That's, I yeah. love it. He doesn't want yes. to stop. Three hours later. Snow okay. leopards. Himalayas. <gasps> that would be wow. awesome. Mom, cool. you're going to have to ring these two on holidays. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we go, because we have to finish up shortly, how proud are you of these two? Because they have turned out to be amazing, haven't they? They're, you're all amazing speakers, but you guys are just, you're, you're incredible. You must yes, be really you're proud. You're really kind. Oh, no, I'm so very lovely. proud of Bindi and Robert. And, you know, it's lovely that they just started out loving wildlife. And Steve and I had said, what everybody says, oh, when we have children, our lives will not change. <laughs> That's a good one. And so when your life changes and you oh. have, like, beautiful Bindi and this glowing white boy. <laughs> Look at his hair. It's He's so beautiful. So white. It is. Um, and and we, were able, we were able to take them with us on all of our filming projects and around the world. And how blessed were we to be able to do that. So now to watch them taking up where Steve left off and continuing the mission, that's pretty special. It's incredible, and kudos to all of you. You guys are absolutely amazing. We've loved having you on the Bill series, Sophie. Please give it up that's one so more time. Fun. For the Irwin family. <laughs> Crikey, it's the Irwin's lands on the 28th Crikey. of October at 9 p.m. on Animal Planet. Go and watch it and follow all of their life, or their wildlife adventures. It's going to be an amazing series. We're back tomorrow with the Stand Up's Cancer special. We've got Kate Thornton on the couch with Kirstie Alsop. We'll see you then. I'm Simon Atkins. Goodbye.